Seals Q Corp. That's L-A-E-S. Small cap semiconductor company. They're basically betting the farm on the next generation of cybersecurity, specifically post-quantum cryptography, PQC. L-A-E-S, technologically super ambitious, right? Sitting on a pile of cash, no bank debt. Sounds great. And it's a big butt. Yeah. They are hemorrhaging money right now. Yeah. Deeply unprofitable. And the valuation, it seems, well, kind of detached from today's numbers. It's a real puzzle. So why are we even talking about them? Well, it's this looming threat, the quantum threat, the idea that future quantum computers, maybe using something like Shor's algorithm. Yeah, that's the one. Could basically crack all our current encryption. Yeah. RSA, EC, the stuff protecting, well, everything. Banking, emails, government secrets. And this isn't science fiction anymore. The U.S. government, for example, they've set a deadline. Agencies need to be ready for the PQC transition by 2027. That puts real pressure on the market. Urgency. Exactly. Urgency LAES is trying to ride. So how are they tackling this massive challenge? Well, interestingly, they're not just focusing on software. Their big play is hardware. Uh, embedding these new PQC algorithms, the ones NIST is standardizing, like Crystal's Kyber. That's the main one, right? The replacement. Yeah, the key one for replacing things like RSA. They're putting that directly onto the silicon chips. They argue their upcoming chip, the Quantum Shield QS7001, they're aiming for launch mid-November 2025. Still way off then. A little, yeah. But they claim it'll be faster and, crucially, offer better protection against physical tampering compared to just software solutions. Okay, and they seem to be making moves to actually deliver this. They bought that company, ICALPS. Right, the acquisition. That brought crucial ASIC design skills in-house, huge for speeding up their product development. And it's not just promises. They have real contracts, don't they? Like that Landis plus Jur deal. Yes, that's significant. A multi-year, multi-million dollar agreement supplying secure chips for the UK's smart meter rollout. We're talking, what, over 26 million homes? Wow. And they've apparently started expanding that model into the Asia-Pacific region, too. So there's some traction. But building chips, fulfilling contracts... That costs money. Lots of it. Which brings us back to their financials. That's where their uh, fortress balance sheet, as some call it, becomes so important. As of mid-2025, they reported $121 million in cash. And zero bank debt. Zero bank debt. That's the key. That cash cushion is what allows them to survive the current burn rate and issue really, really aggressive guidance. They're projecting, what, 59% to 82% revenue growth for this fiscal year? Huge numbers. But... Let's uh, splash some cold water here because that valuation, it only works if they actually hit those massive targets, maybe even beat them. Absolutely. The current picture is, well, pretty stark. Last report showed a net loss of over $5 million on only about $3 million in revenue. Yeah, the margin is deeply negative, almost minus 170%. <laughs> and cash flow from operations, also negative. They are burning cash. So okay, how does a company burning cash get valued like this? Their price to sales ratio, trailing 12 months, is around 40x. 40, yeah. which is just yeah. way out there compared to the rest of the semiconductor industry. You know, often you see PS ratios under 4x. So 10 times the average. Easily. The market is essentially pricing in perfection. It's all based on future potential, the PQC story. It's a valuation built purely on narrative right now, not current financial reality. And that creates enormous risk, doesn't it? You see it in the stock price volatility. The 52-week range is wild, like 31 to $11. Absolutely. And remember who they're up against. Intel, NXP, Infineon. These are giants with vastly more money, more manufacturing power. Huge execution risk then. Everything depends on them delivering. So tying this back for you, the listener, LAEES is, well, it's the definition of a speculative growth stock. It's really only suitable if you have a very high tolerance for risk and you're thinking long term. It feels very binary. It really does. Either they nail the execution, meet or beat those aggressive 2025-2026 targets and potentially become a major PQC player, or that high valuation multiple could collapse severely. Okay, so here's the final thought for you to chew on. We know they talk about a potential revenue pipeline of, say, $170 million. The big question is, how long can a company keep trading at a 40x price-to-sales ratio based purely on that narrative support, that story, mm -hmm. versus when does it need to start showing actual financial support, real revenue, real profits flowing through? Finding that inflection point, that's the critical challenge if you're looking at the stock. When does the story need to become reality? 